We've got some catching up to do. That should take 30 seconds for Queen C, shall we? Especially on International Women's Day. Can't catch me. What a difference it makes when the sun is out, hey? And everything beyond that point, we've still saved each other. I'm already, I'm already telling you too much. Good morning, everybody. I am using a new camera. Um, I finally got a new one. And I just truly, it's like, I've got to even put a photo of it on the screen for you to see how bizarre it is. Just fingers crossed you see this footage. That's what I'm saying, because filming on new equipment and I've been watching videos. I've done so much research on it, like, comparison YouTube videos. Fingers crossed, it works. Anyway, hello, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sasha and I chat shit for a living, to be honest. We've got some catching up to do. I'm going to have my glass of water and do a little breath work session on the Reverie app. Oh, I'm really, truly sorry for not filming last, for not getting a video up last week. It's like, so frustrating for me when that happens and it's so frustrating to me that so much of my life has felt so unstable for like a full-on year but I really believe the end is in sight I'm going to catch up on everything today explain the situation everything's going to make sense and I feel so close to being in a position and a place of just like sheer stability where I can have a day off like just take a breath excuse me handsome med <gasps> Whoa, that's... oh no i don't want to do that that's it whoa we're practicing zooming on some beautiful faces who else is here just two boys okay i think i've got the hang of like it like switches it's very very fancy so yeah <laughs> This is a new camera. I want to I want to know what you guys think of the quality of the sound. Obviously, the light. Remember, I was getting loads of lines on the last one. Car chats are going to be back. Perhaps not today because I need to buy a. What is these? <coughs> I need to buy a proper, like arm handle for it. But um, I just wanted to like fully get it first before I bought anything else. Yeah, I've just woken up. It's eight o'clock. I'm very much in procrastination stage because I'm packing up the house. Again, all will be revealed. I will tell you why I'm moving. <coughs> I'll tell you why I'm moving in due course, but I want to start my morning with doing some breath work. My new favourite thing. I'll also update you on that. And having my glass of water, which is the first thing I do every single morning. And I've been doing that habit. <coughs> Since the second week in January, every single morning, I've woken up and had a glass of water, non-negotiable. Anyway, so yeah, I've been doing, I've been having my water every single day for the last three months, pretty much. It's been my non-negotiable. And now I've decided to start introducing my breathing exercises into this too. Um, so I'm going to do, I've spoken about this a lot. I am working with Reverie at the moment and I will tell you a little bit about them later. But at the moment, I am really loving the breathing exercises. And I do cyclic sighing. Welcome back to cyclic sighing. Here's, before we begin, skip the please tell me on a scale from 1 to 10, how relaxed do you feel right now? 3, yeah. Here we go. Inhale through your nose halfway. Hold. Now inhale all the way through your nose. Now slowly exhale through your mouth. Now that you've completed the exercise, I'd like you to reflect on your experience. Yeah, and I just feel like starting my morning by breathing is actually making the world of difference. And because my glass of water is my was my non-negotiable every single day, it's about like building those habits and those healthy habits rather than just trying to overwhelm myself with loads of stuff. I actually really need to buy the book Atomic Habits by, I don't know who the author is, but I get told about it all the time. I think I'm going to get in the shower, walk the boys, and then we need to go to the supermarket and get shitloads of newspaper because I am packing up the kitchen today and I feel like I'm going to need some. I also think I'll just treat you all and run a hairbrush through my hair. What do you think? 
because I'm moving, I've packed a like skincare bag to just be able to take with me wherever I'm going. And I want to start incorporating Skin Rocks exfoliating acid into my skincare routine. Now, I haven't used acids for a while and I'm going to eventually start back on retinoids soon. But because I have completely neglected my skin the last year, I wanted to start off with literally a gentle acid exfoliator, which is uh, which is exactly what this is. Obviously, you know how much I love Caroline and trust her expertise and all of the Skin Rocks products I've ever tried are insane. So I thought what I'll do is before I go onto the retinoids, I'll start prepping with the gentle acid. And by the time I start using the retinoids again, my skin will be less likely well, what's going on, you know? So marked here, day one, of using the acid exfoliant. They came with, they came, there's two. There's like a stronger one and then this one. Fragrance free as well, just no thrills, easy. And then I've got the vitamin C medicate, C Tetra, which I love. I've got some hyaluronic acid. And then at the moment, I'm really loving Charlotte Tilbury's magic cream and the La Roche-Posay SPF. A bit of a outer cream on the lips. Can't go wrong. Let's go. Do you reckon I put vitamin C on before? Or... Vitamin C or hyaluronic acid? Does vitamin C... To layer vitamin C and hyaluronic acid serums, always apply vitamin C first to cleanse dry skin. Be sure to leave time. And then whilst we're waiting for that to sink in, let's pop a little bit of this eye cream on. This is the Garnier Vitamin C Eye Cream. I've heard so many incredible things about this, but in particular Grant, um, Grant, I don't know his last name, Dolson, Dawson, I think. I don't want to get it wrong, so I'll link his um, Instagram down below. But he raves about this, and I actually got sent it the other day. I've got no mirror, so I'm going to have to use my phone. He used it and said it's insane, so let's give it a go. And I haven't used an eye cream since maybe like 18 months, something crazy like that. What else have I packed? I packed a, the Skin Rocks Cream Cleanser, again, fragrance free, and the support oil, because I love this at night, and then the fresh toner, no, the fresh, sorry, the fresh kombucha facial treatment essence, love. And a little makeup brush cleaner. I'm thinking maybe I don't put hyaluronic on on top. I need to ask her, which, brings me to tell you about this. So my, I think the first time I really properly got into skincare was the beginning of lockdown, um, or like learning about it. It was the beginning of lockdown when Caroline Hyron's book came out, Skin, I think it was called Skin Rocks. Um, and I got sent this the other day because Skin Rocks Premium has launched on the Skin Rocks app, which you can download, this basically is like a subscription service, but it's much more layered and detailed information. And exactly what I just did, wondering what goes on first, vitamin C or hyaluronic acid, that's what I would do. Go onto the app, download it, and it would have all the detailed information on there. Look, I just got this little phone charm too. I'm going to do that today. This is a very kindly been gifted to me. I'm not sure the prices of the premium. Um, but again, I'll link them down below and I'll put a link to getting the app and stuff. It is amazing. She's the OG. She's so knowledgeable and I really trust her recommendations. And I also, the, my favourite thing about Caroline, which she always has sort of like, I think she prides herself on, or I pride her on it. She doesn't just promote her own brand. She never has. She doesn't believe that just because she's got a brand, all the other brands need to just disappear into the distance. She's always championed other brands, other founders, other women, and I have a lot of respect for that. She's not a competition person. She's a celebratory female woman. Let's just take 30 seconds for Queen C, shall we? Especially on International Women's Day. Guys, I don't want to be the person who just keeps talking about their new equipment, but I'm really enjoying this. Let's zoom you in a bit, shall we? I've just done some emails. 
I like to have a clear inbox on Friday, just like a let's head into the weekend. And I think because I'm packing at the moment and sorting everything out, it's it's very much needed for me to have that like clear, tidy, organised. The way that I've packed is actually very quite is very neat and tidy as well. So it does make my brain happier. So I thought I'd just pop a little bit of makeup on today because I have been feeling just not not been feeling myself at all. Sometimes a little bit of self-care this way helps. And I say this way because the real self-care obviously comes from, you know, the inside. We know that. And I have been doing that. But I really feel this side of, like, getting ready and doing my skincare has been a little bit neglected. I thought this might make me feel a little bit better. Do I want any mascara on today? No, I don't think I do brow gel stuck to my head there let's put a bit of blusher on do you know what i found the other day so my best friend is getting married in may and i did her makeup trial the other day and i used this having forgotten how much i loved it and it is the refi will that focus whoa look at focus on that so much better than my other camera it's the refi cream blush in the shade rose and when i used it on her I, I was like oh my god i've totally forgotten how gorgeous this is so i packed it in my again i've done the same thing with my makeup just packed like a makeup bag for the next couple of weeks so pretty and i feel like it's one of those blushes that kind of adapts to your skin tone like chesk is a lot well not a lot actually but she's a, a little bit paler than me and I feel like it's showing up a bit warmer on my skin. Let's do a bit of Fix Plus. Do you know what? I think that will forever be one of my favourite products in the world. It's been a little bit quiet because Shelf's working upstairs, so. That's slightly better, isn't it? Just a little bit of something. I really do like this lip bar. It's the um, Summer Fridays one. And you can see I've used quite a lot of it. What should I do with my hair today? Because I kind of just want it up and out of the way. And then I'm also going to put my Diptyque Dosal perfume on. Sorry, Ninas, I know you don't like it. This perfume really reminds me of when I first moved out of the house and into when I first moved down to Portland with Shelves last year. When I first went through my breakup. I feel like my hair is thinning so much. So I'm going to try and move away from using hair bands as much as I do and stick to clips and see if that makes a difference. See, it's like following me around. Can't catch me. Please let me know as well, like what you think of the quality. I know a lot of you were like, there's no problem, but let me know what you think of the sound, the quality. I have no idea. It's kind of a bit risky me filming a whole vlog on a new piece of equipment. So um, yes, let me know what you think. Whoa, what a beautiful day. I feel like <sighs> this morning I woke up and I was like, oh my God, I just I really need this day to not start because I have so much to do so I ended up kind of lying in bed a bit numb rather than getting up and doing everything I needed to do and it's now like 11 o'clock and I'm conscious that I haven't started packing yet but I thought I'll get the dogs out and then that's one thing done because I hate it I hate boys feeling like well it's mainly Vinny but they do know when they haven't been out and they get a bit funny about it they just get itchy. They know that they get walked in the morning. That's always been their routine. Can you come on? His new favorite thing to do is eat grass. Better than dog poo, I suppose. Honestly, the sunshine, the summer, it's just the best. Vinny's favorite thing actually is throwing sticks. What a difference it makes when the sun is out, hey? God, it's so easy to kind of hold it. It's so discreet. I think I'd be way more confident vlogging out in public. I mean, I know I do vlog anywhere anyway, but I think I'd feel a lot more comfortable vlogging out and about. Okay, dogs walked and hydrate, don't hydrate. I've got to go to the post office 
and to budgins to take three parcels back and i need to get shitloads of newspaper to start with this kitchen and i feel like as it's a friday <sighs> screams of treating myself to a little iced latte hiya please can i have um the ham and cheese egg bites ham and cheese egg bites yeah and can I have the caramelised macadamia oat shake and espresso? Is that a large? Uh, yes, please. But can I have it with half the amount of syrup? Half the amount of syrup? Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. That's everything. Thank you. Yeah. Guys, I'm fucking loving this camera. So I don't want to keep talking about it, but I'm loving it. It's making me seriously happy. Don't forget to download your Starbucks app because you get points and points equal prizes. Oh, I've got a reward. What a treat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fuck's sake, I've just realised oat shake and espresso means oat milk. I hate oat milk. I don't want oat milk. And now it's too late and I'm too embarrassed to say anything otherwise. Oh, oat milk is not the one, right? Because it's very inflammatory. So I'm told. Although that does taste absolutely pain. I've eaten so bad the last couple of days. Mmm, delicious. So, um... Right, where do we begin? It's not majorly deep, I'm just moving out. I'm sure you guys are aware that I'm looking to buy my own property and move in. Obviously I sold my property last year with my ex <clears throat> and I didn't actually think I'd be buying a property straight away. I thought like, you know, I'll wait and see what I wanna do. It's such a big decision, it's such a big commitment. But I think based off how insanely unsettled I felt the last year, both with kind of like not knowing where I'm gonna be going next, not long, not knowing how long I'm gonna be somewhere, the money that is involved with um, renting and stuff, I think it just got to the position where I was like, I don't feel in a position to sustain this life on my own, knowing that I could buy a property and sustain the life on my own because at least I know that I'm investing in myself if that makes any sense whatsoever I think I could have worded it a hell of a lot more simple than that but that's essentially what I feel and I feel insanely lucky to be in a position at the age of 32 where I can buy a property um don't get me wrong uh, you know if I hadn't have met my ex-partner and he hadn't been in the position he was in we wouldn't have been able to buy the house we bought and made the money that we did on it and uh, for that alone, obviously I'm so grateful because now I'm in a position where I'm buying a property on my own at the age of 32. As exciting and um, as exciting as that will be, it, it also just feels like such a huge responsibility, almost as if the money isn't real. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but it, it does to a certain extent feel like this isn't happening because where's the money coming from like <laughs> I feel like it's not that long ago that I would have 20 a 20 pound note in my hand and think whoa yeah oh, Lord, think all the things about 20 pounds so yeah it's been a really strange experience and I will sort of delve into it deeper at another point because we're on a time stamp today to pack up this house I am in the process of buying a property I don't want to be one of these people where I say things like oh I don't want to let you know until you know it's all confirmed it's just the reality, isn't it? There's always a risk involved in anything, but we're quite far along in the process and it's chain free both sides and fingers crossed, I will be able to share more with you soon. That's all I'm gonna say on that right now because like I said, I don't wanna start getting excited about the prospect of what this property is to me. And to, I don't wanna tell you too much about this property basically until those keys are physically in my hand. But yeah, that is the situation. And then as you know, I've been living in a private rental with Shelb, one of my best friends for the last year. Well, since May last year, so just under a year. And we have lived together there in that house since from May until now. But there was a big, break in between that where Shelbs went over to New Zealand for a seven week period that ended up turning into like three months. So I think over the Christmas period running that house on my own, it's a big house, this, you know, it's a four bedroom house, three story. Um, the two dogs, work, the cleaning, everything, uh, it all just felt huge and very expensive to me. So I decided to move out 
temporarily until my house is ready to move in. I am buying a property that has one dream feature of mine and the rest is everything I said I didn't want, but just something about it felt right. I were, I'm already telling you too much. There's going to be a period from having the keys until I can physically move in. So I have had another opportunity come up where a, another private rental, it's just a two bedroom flat, much smaller, much cheaper, much more sustainable for me whilst I'm prepping myself for an obscene amount of money to be put into my like my permanent property that's what's happened it's not really ideal because obviously moving is so stressful and this will be the fourth out of fifth move that I'm doing in just over one year so in like 16 months I would have moved five times which is fucking batshit considering I've also added a divorce into that mix and been running my business completely on my own so safe to say it's um I'm actually, I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of myself because I cannot explain to you how much it's felt like trudging through mud for the last, since the day I walked out pretty much. But I definitely feel like I'm heading to a place where I can see the light. I can like, it's all starting to fall into place. It's all starting to happen. It's all starting to make me believe that it's gonna be worth it. To add even more stress and complication into this plan, I move out of this house on Sunday and then I have minimum one week, maximum two weeks before I move into the flat. In between that time, Auntie Soph has the boys. I'm gonna be staying at DB's because he's also having an operation on Monday. So the timing's worked out whereby I can like help him. I can also have like a bit of a break of just being still and having chill and not m disrupting the boys too much because they love it there, they love her. Um, So that takes another weight off and then I'll be moving into the flat. It's a lot, it's been a lot, but you know what? All of these things happen for a reason. As stressful as it is on paper, I think the amount of work I've done on myself over the last few years means that I'm just sort of taking everything as steadily as I can and feeling okay. Like, I feel like I'm just in a complete tunnel vision of putting myself first right now and putting one foot in front of the other and being as present as I can be. And that's all I can do really cheers to that sweetheart that caramelized macadamia syrup is absolutely banging so yeah so that's where we are me and shelbs are absolutely fine shelbs will me and shelbs will always have an incredibly special beautiful friendship i actually think both shelby and i are quite difficult to live with so put us together and it's not been like smooth sailing but it's also been everything we both needed in that time frame and our friendship is the most important thing and living together is a whole separate thing and it's funny because i haven't even asked shelves if she minds me telling you but i'm sure she won't mind i think it's perfectly okay to have a time stamp on how long you can house share or live with people or you know we're both women in our 30s with very different ways of living very similar ways of living and a lot of similarities but then also quite a lot of clashing things too and i think when Shelbs was away for that period in New Zealand and I'd eventually started sleeping, I really started to enjoy the freedom of having my own space and having things how I liked it. And I think the same goes for Shelbs. So I think the timing of when me and Shelb came back into each other's lives, we literally saved each other. We, the, the, like it, oh my God, it makes me emotional to think about it. <laughs> the time that we had when I first left my marriage, and we moved down to Weymouth, uh, Portland near Weymouth, into like a holiday rental. I think it was like six weeks. It was honestly like a, a time in my life that I will treasure forever. And um, I do, I feel like me and Shelb saved each other in that time frame. A and everything beyond that point, we've still saved each other, but that thinking, thinking back to that time is such a special moment, such a special pe time period for me that I'll never ever forget and she is just she is she's one of my best friends in the world she always will be and I cherish our friendship immensely but living together has 
<laughs> reached its peak, which I'm sure she won't mind me saying, but I will ask her later, in which case I may have to cut all of this footage out. She's like, no, don't tell her. But I know she won't give a shit because I think it's perfectly fine and normal to share the complete realities of like living with your best friend. And it's not like, you know, we don't have arguments or anything like that. We've never once screamed and shouted at each other. We've just had conversations where we have difference of opinions and we like to live differently and stuff like that. So... Yeah, so that is that update. It's quarter past 12 now. I really need to fucking crack on with packing the kitchen. I've packed the whole of the middle floor, which is my bedroom, ensuite, main bathroom, other bedroom. And then now I need to pack all of the kitchen, which is predominantly my stuff, and the lounge and the little toilet. So just like take bits down and put them into the storage. I'm able to keep all of my stuff at the house before I actually move into the flat, which is perfect and very, very helpful. And then when I actually move in either next week or the week after, I will get a van or as much as I love a van, guys, I may even get um, some removal men to do it because I've obviously got my beloved washing machine. I've got my fridge freezer, stuff like that. And uh, DB isn't going to be able to help me because he's going to have an operation so he can't lift anything so yeah but you know what we'll make it work we'll make it work right i need to go and get newspaper and we need to pack the shit out of this house are we rolling we're rolling oh, ah! <laughs> i'm honestly disgusted with myself but the only thing they had was like the local paper and the daily star so I spent six pounds on profit to this shitty newspaper just to wrap up my um, kitchen stuff. It is what it is. So I kind of feel like I don't know where to start, but I thought what I would do is create like a box of things that I will need straight away or that I want to use last, like the kettle and a mug. Okay, I feel like the best place to start I feel like the best thing to do is start a cupboard at a time. The worst thing about this job is starting. So we're just gonna go, we're gonna go for this cupboard of Tupperware. Make sure it all matches because nothing worse. These are so good from Ikea, you know, like the little food clips. I might leave shelled some of those because I do not need that many. I do not need that many. stage where I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere but I have done quite a lot so we've got some really heavy stuff in those crates these mum gave me them from Morrison's they're brilliant they fit so much in and then I've got the boxes that the dog food comes in which isn't really ideal because I feel like there's a bit of a smell to them but it's what it is then I've done these two boxes too so that cupboard is empty this cupboard is almost done. That's empty. This is almost empty. This is almost empty. Mugs and stuff are gone. Glasses are gone. This is my next job. <laughs> the actual food. To be honest, this, this will be the first time I've ever done it, but I am thinking about just getting removal men to come to this house, put all of my boxes in a van, take it to the flat and just unload. I think because I've got such big things as well, like my washing machine, my fridge freezer, and unless I get my army of friends down for one day, which they already came and helped on Wednesday anyway, I just feel like it may be easier to just pay like two, 300 quid and get it done. I'm also just assuming that that's what it costs. It might even be more. Anyway, this 700 pound coffee's lasted me a long while. I'm up in the cupboard. This. Bought this in Aldi a few weeks ago. No, about a couple of months ago now. Dark cherry sweetness, cherry bourbon barbecue sauce. This has really made me want to cook chicken wings. I love chicken wings as well. Basil pistachio pesto. Shiitake mushrooms. Best honey in the world. I've spoken about it at great length before but it's the Fortnum & Mason lavender honey. This is the content we all live for. This 
is next level. It's way better than the Nutella. It's way more expensive than Nutella, but it's better. And it's the Bon Mama Hazelnut Chocolate Spread. Love it. You need to check the dates and stuff like this as well, because you know, 30th of March, January, February, March. We have not got very long to use this. Also a fantastic barbecue sauce. Maybe I'll take that to DB's and we'll have it next week. And then this is from, I bought this from Sicily. This is orange and cinnamon. Have I opened that? No, I don't, don't want to because then I'll seal it. 2025. And then Nduja paste, also from Sicily. Best before, 30th, oh no. 31st of the 10th, 23. Sorry, I'm Deidre. I've just had the funniest person DM me on Instagram because I've been moaning about how bored I am packing today. And she's written, please don't tell us we have to watch 35 minutes of you saying you're bored packing on Sunday. <coughs> it proper cracked me up. <coughs> I really feel like all of my followers, both subscribers and on Instagram, like fully get my sense of humour. And I think some people, when I see like, other influencers posting stuff that say like you know on their close friends or whatever inside scoop people do stuff like that I just think you lot are hilarious and you just I know that we would be like actual best friends no doubt about it excuse me anyway I just popped to Marks and Spencer's because well I was gonna buy us dinner for tonight and DB suggested maybe like I got one of those dine-in meal things but when I was looking around there I just thought I think I just want a takeaway and I don't want to even have to put anything in the oven but I haven't eaten anything since those bites so I got oh my gosh Vinny's going crazy in the garden so I got myself a sandwich which I've eaten and then I picked this up for us M&S sparkling presse light ginger and Mexican lime delicious and then I got well mum Nan, me and DB are going to have a little afternoon tea on Sunday for Mother's Day. So I bought some cherry baked wells, some hot cross buns because these are mum's favourite and some milk chocolate raisins. And then I just popped around to Luba's house to pick up some boxes because she had some spare boxes. She's also moving house and we're moving quite close to each other eventually as in like when I'm finally, finally in my house. We were just talking about how crazy it is because Lubes has been in my life since we first moved down to Weston. However many years ago that was, like 20 years ago. I was 11 and I'm 32 now. So a long time ago. My hair looks greasy and it's not, I'm not really sure what's going on there. I feel like I'm on the last stretch. Oh, also, I rang mum and I was like, Mum, have you got any newspaper? I've run out and I can't keep buying like the Daily Mirror and shit like that. She was like, don't use newspaper, use kitchen roll. So that is a much smarter idea. And that's what I'm gonna use now. I haven't got that much left to pack, to be honest, but I have got some glassware and stuff in the lounge. Sorry if moving chat is boring, especially as someone's just said, please don't make it be 35 minutes of this. But another shout out to Richie John. Um, Em's dad works for like a car garage and also gave me loads of boxes. And I've just opened up one of the bigger ones to find a smaller one and all this bloody padding inside. So that is stunning. Not environmentally friendly, I understand. Ow. But I think I'm now gonna have like enough room to pack everything I need to pack, which is bliss. Bliss, bliss, bliss. Right, I do feel like the end is in sight and that I'm getting somewhere. And hello, darling boy. You're a little bit nervous, aren't you? And you are my boysies. One thing I wanted to speak to you about, and I know basically, you know that I have been working with this app, Reverie, and I had the absolute honor recently to interview Dr. David Spiegel, who is the head of the Reverie app. This is hands down the most used mental health app I've ever come across. I use it, you can see, so this week you can see that I have done it 
Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Last week I did it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Week before that, Tuesday, Thursday. The hypnotherapy was the first form of therapy that I ever had when I was 17. And that's why I was so intrigued about working with this app. The difference I have felt to my... <gasps> Have the boys been up there? The difference I've noticed when I use it is actually insane. And yeah, basically I'm absolutely obsessed. I've been using it now for nearly three months. I really wanted to make sure that before I say to you, right, this is incredible, go download it, that I really thoroughly used it, enjoyed it and feel comfortable telling you about it. So although this is a part of a paid partnership, you will have known that I've spoken about Reverie quite a lot over the last couple of months. No, I'm really, like thrilled to announce that I have a 30% off code for you and I'll leave it on the screen down below but basically download the app use this code the more you do it the better you will feel and don't be overwhelmed by how it like I don't know I don't know how it works I'm so intrigued by it you know how I feel about neuroscience at the moment I'm really into it and I cannot recommend it enough but I just wanted to insert this clip of me speaking to David Spiegel, it's fascinating. He is like one of the most intelligent people I've ever met in my life. It was an absolute honor to speak to him. And I really hope you enjoy BRB. Oh, this is the lovely. I wanna debunk that myth that hypnotherapy is this huge, big, scary thing, uh, because I know that it's not from what I've been through and obviously since working with the app, but you are the professional in this field. <laughs> It's the oldest Western conception of psychotherapy. The first time a talking interaction between a doctor and a patient was thought to have therapeutic benefit. But it's still a sideshow. People treat it as something that's either silly or dangerous or both. Um, but they don't see it for what it is. And I'm delighted that you're sharing your experience and helping to spread the word that it is a very valuable, rapid, helpful way for people to help themselves. And is the... The, the benefits of self-hypnosis are better seen with more regular usage, is that correct? Yes, it certainly yeah. it's, it helps to use it regularly. And it, unlike meditation, you don't have to do it for very long. Yeah. It is, it is important to do it. That was my, it, my next question was... The difference between hypnosis and meditation, and I know, I understand that that might seem like a, you know, an ignorant question to ask, but I just want to... I want to make sure that I cover as much as I can in this half an hour so that I can, you know. Sasha, I'm, I'm delighted you're asking it. And if it's ignorant, there are a lot of ignorant people around because it's the most frequent question. I'm oh, asking. okay. That makes me feel it's better. <laughs> understandable because meditation has become a widely popular, widely used uh, altered state. Yeah. And they are similar, but they're different. Um, Meditation is Eastern, and the idea is not to solve a problem with it, but to just be different. So it's more about being than doing. Mm -hmm. And the idea is you have open presence. You just let thoughts and feelings flow through you. You don't judge, you don't evaluate, you're not trying to fix anything. Um, you do a body scan, which sometimes you do in hypnosis, checking out parts of your body, and you cultivate compassion, which is a good thing mm -hmm. to do. In hypnosis, it's Western. We're trying to solve a problem uh -huh. to help you sleep better or eat more mindfully or uh, stop smoking or handle pain or focus yeah. um, or end procrastination. Um, so it's more doing than being, whereas meditation is more being than doing. Okay, yeah. And, and they affect different parts of your brain. So what they have in common is turning down activity in the default mode network. It's the part in the back of the brain, the posterior cingulate cortex, that is sort of your ego. It's the part of you that when you're not doing much else, it is saying, who am I? What am I? What kind of a person am I? What do people think of me? And Lou has, uh, Louise, sorry, has told me the story about the Olympic swimming team and how through hypnosis, they shaved time off their Please, can you share that story? Because I need to hear that first, Anne. <laughs> well, this is the uh, the Stanford women's swimming team, which is a fabulous team over many decades, and many of those women have gone to the Olympics. Um, their coach noticed one day that they seemed to be swimming faster in practice than they were in meets. Now, you would think and hope that it would be exactly the opposite, that when you're there competing, you know, your adrenaline's pumping, you're really going, and what we noticed, so he asked me to work with him. And so what I learned was that while they were 
practicing, they were just in tune with their bodies and how to use them, uh, the, the flow of movement in the body and, and their sense of connection with the body. They were immersed in the process, in their connection with their body, in swimming as well as they could. When they were in a meet, they were getting distracted by the women on the lines on either side. And swimming is not a contact sport. So it really doesn't matter what the woman in the next lane is doing. What matters is what you're doing. So I got them to practice in their imagination, in self-hypnosis, swimming their best race, but not as a race, just in the lane, doing what you do. And their times got better. Wow. So they were distracting themselves because they were focusing on competing with the, the women on either side rather than just connecting with their body and doing what they knew how to do as yeah. an athlete. Wow, that is absolutely incredible. I, I am a huge fan of the app. I absolutely love it. And I'm excited to continue using it, especially since seeing how much the productivity session has been doing for me so i'm gonna i'm gonna start afresh with the focus sessions and try and really nail that now <laughs> um yeah. but yeah thank you so much for your time i honestly i can't thank you enough I'm, i feel so honored but i'm delighted that it's helpful to you and that you're trying to help others get help from reverie and yeah. um you know my idea is to just uh, spread the mental health here help people take full advantage of this ability that many people have yeah and use it to to feel better and to live better and to do better and so you're you're making yourself into a better person by doing it so congratulations That's amazing great. thank you thank you so much hey show everyone where your hair is gone i shaved it off tell them why because i'm having an operation finally monday morning going in coming out a fixed a, a real boy <laughs> He's having a hernia operation. An inguinal hernia. That's important, apparently. That bit of information. Yeah. I did just tell you the whole thing, but I'm not going to tell them because it's a bit gross. Basically, his intestines are falling out his arse. Huh? Yeah, my intestines have come down to meet with my testicles. It's not nice. Now, look, now help me pack. But like the 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 lens is so wide, you're like fully in shot now. Yeah. You can zoom that lens in though, can't you? Yeah, like, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Move your stupid, smelly foot. Hey, you, you better not be recording that. Oh, I tell you what, I couldn't work out what a mine in here. Oh, I can. Um, it's <laughs> just all those and the ones at the back. So those are mine and all oh, the what? top ones. What, they're all mine? No, they're all mine. Oh, right. And these are mine. And those ones at the back are mine. Yeah. Oh, sorry, darling. We ordered regular pizza. <laughs> they're very small. There's no way they're regular pizzas. They are. Small wasn't an option. No, they are not regular. We'll have to eat something else after. We'll be so angry. There's absolutely no way they're regular. They're, this is from a place called Fat Pizza. <laughs> I ain't getting fat eating that. But we were struggling because you wanted anchovies on pizza and no one was doing them. I regret it. No, look good. Do you know what? Why don't we go on an adventure after? Because I fancy chicken wings. Yeah, I think we're going to have to, because this is bad. But I'm really enjoying this blind as well. Mm. Season six. We've just started watching oh, oh, oh. Love is Blind season six. Just wow. We love it, don't we? <sighs> it's the first programme we started watching together, wasn't it? Oh my God, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Aww. Can you open one of these for me so I can continue talking? Mm -hmm. We're going to this shop to get some dessert. And even though we had tiny piddly sized pizzas, we don't feel disgusting, do we? Yeah, but also, I've got to eat so well after my operation, so I'm making the most of it this weekend. That's my excuse, and it has been my excuse in the last eight months. I was gonna say, just this weekend. Hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got, do I need a coat? You've got a fleece on, you should be all right. One thing about me, I'm a passenger princess. And I love it. Aren't I? What? I said I'm a passenger princess. Oh, yeah, that's right. Let me see that hat on you. What? I think you look like M&M. <laughs> I fancy ice cream. I think ice cream's a good choice. Thing is, are we going to get a tub each or are we just going to get a tub and split it? Well, I don't think it's necessary to eat an entire tub of ice cream for one person, do you? Necessary! <laughs> necessary! I... <laughs> 
I know I can put it away, but I shan't be I shan't be consuming an entire tub of ice cream. I've never managed to do that. Before we get back to yours and I have a total panic attack that I've lost my phone. I've just heard it fall out of my pocket, all right? Oh yeah. So we know my phone is in the car. Do you imagine if you lost your phone? You'd be having a flat out panic attack. Hey, I have been having panic attacks, haven't I? Hey, no, that's not a funny thing. <laughs> I did laugh after them. Well, a little while after, yeah, maybe. No, actually, we shouldn't joke about it, but I have had two panic attacks in the last three weeks, haven't I? They were intense as well. Yeah. Understandable, though. Maybe one day we should talk to everyone about like that huge emotional release I had. We are, one day. Maybe one day we should do, like, uh... A bit loser though, isn't it? What? I was gonna say, like, we could do a QA. People are dying to know the story. Yeah, well, you know, got plenty of time, innit? Now, what do you want to say to me on International Women's Day? That I am proud of you and that you inspire me every single day, not just International Women's Day. And I think that it is so lovely how many messages you've received today because you obviously inspire so many people. <laughs> uh, that you are the most beautiful, intelligent, funny woman that has graced my life, and I'm grateful every single second. And whenever we're apart, I do nothing but cry. You're going left here, so slow down. Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't know we were going here, did I? Well, you said you wanted to go to Asda. All right. Yeah, I thought we'd play one. The, what about the big space by the front door? What, the, the child and parent one? <laughs> and also, <laughs> Although it's very, you know, going out with you is like a child and parent experience. And also, when you just said all of those things, you said about the woman grace in your life, do you mean actually also the world? The world, best woman in the Obviously world? Obviously the world. Yeah, good. I went without saying. Strawberry cheesecake, vanilla brownie, dolce delish. I do love cookie dough, to be fair. No, I love cookie dough. I mean. <laughs> half baked? I think half baked is the one. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Now, let's show everybody what we got. I think it'd be more useful. Half baked Ben and & Jerry's and chocolate M&M's. I wanted magic stars, but they were sold out. If you keep the tripod attached to the bottom, so you can hold the bottom bit, so you've got that little bit of height. The camera yeah, well. that is true. That's a good point. Yeah. Lovely <gasps> bit of kit, though. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>